like Gina Davis Institute like, talks about, it's just like women, even in their own films, there's still less female voices heard and you count up how many words are said by a woman versus a man, and it's infuriating, and that's not the case with this. And we get, into, get to get into the nuance in a modern way, yes, with the old nostalgic origin story, but in a modern way, really explore, like, what does that mean, her mere presence being around, even with the best intention, being all powerful in so many different ways, how does your mere presence create conflict and confrontation? And then how do you grapple and deal with that when actually you're, you know, you're trying to do good and still negative outcomes come out of it? Um, and I just, those nuances and complexities I think are really important to get into and delve into. And is the reason why I think we go back to those same stories is for another iteration of the perspective for us to explore. And then the difference between live action and voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you've done a hell of a lot of live action you've gone through some fantastic role. Thanks. Um, the difference between working on a live action project with you know, a voice thing, which is a very different beast. What, mm -hmm. How did you find it? Oh, I love it. I mean, I've been doing voice stuff for years, and some of my favorite actors are people who've always done voice stuff, like Tim Curry, who's like the best, yeah. um, and any and everything. Um, and so I love that idea of you know, these cartoons and animated films and things that I watched as a kid that inspired me and you know you you'd, you'd make that sound again <laughs> you know and like you just laugh and it was always funny and um, you know but now I get to actually do that for real and how do how do you make that sound and, and get that you know um, emotion translated you know it's not enough for me to just think about it and try I actually have to like swing a sword and I have to jump up and down and try different versions of what that could possibly mean to demonstrate the difference between a grunt from, you know, being smashed by a mythical creature versus like an effort to, you know, of, of her strength to actual pain, um, and it's it's uh, it's awesome. It can wreck the vocals, but it's it's really fun and it's really awesome. How do you develop the voice? Sorry. Uh huh. What's your relationship to comic book culture? I love comic book culture. My uncle Gus is a comic book artist. Um, so that was my kind of first introduction into it. Actually, my grandmother was the one who kind of got him into it. She used to collect, I mean, it was, for her, she was remembered when these, you know, these, these characters first came to life. So she had the number one Superman, she had the number one of all of these different ones, and lost them all, if you can imagine. <laughs> we don't talk about that at all. No, no, it's a tragedy know. in our family. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's amazing that, you know, my uncle, who found a passion for it and loved it and was drawing Spider-Man in his room as a little kid, then ended up getting to actually draw for Spider-Man and, 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 you know, and, and DC World and, and then independent, you know, publications as well and create a whole life over it and to see how much it's grown. Like, I remember, you know, he's the one who introduced me to Frank Miller and, and Neil Gaiman and all of these incredible people. And so then, you know, when Sin City, the script comes around and everyone's looking at it like, I don't know what that is. You know, this is pre-300, pre-really like the huge tentpole, you know, comic movies that we're doing. It was like, I absolutely knew how awesome this was going to be. And then here comes my uncle to visit on set and they're talking about like blue pencils and special papers and stuff, super nerdy. And it's just really wonderful to see where Frank's gone. I mean, now, you know, I'm voicing Wonder Woman. Here's the man who brought us Dark Knight. And... You know, then he comes and draws a cover for me for this short um, that I wrote of a new character for La um, at that And Wonder Woman, actually, they lent Wonder Woman to the cover so it could ha have a better sell. And then the money in, from proceeds from that went to help with the reconstruction on the ground in Puerto Rico. Like, it's just the power of comic world has been something that's been really tremendous in my entire family. And to see it on the grounds, really, and to see how big these cons have gotten. And, you know, like, again, like Neil Gaiman's Sandman inspired short death is in here with Wonder Woman. Like, it all just feels like the universe is combining in some kind of way. And it just, you know, is one of those reminders that I'm doing the right thing, I'm on the right path, and, and I'm part of one of the most incredible things that all of us share, which is storytelling. And Wait. it's powerful. Go for it. Um, Robert, we've heard a lot about um, from your directors and producers about how open-hearted you are and also what a warrior you are and how a you're word? the perfect Wonder Woman. <laughs> All right, yeah. you can send the check. Um, <laughs> and so I was just wondering if you always kind of felt a kinship with her or if it's something that's grown over your with playing Wonder Woman? with her. Yeah. 
I've always definitely felt a kinship with her, but she's always been an interesting kind of character because there's uh, a line with her, like, you know, Wonder Woman would kill, you know? And, you know, she's got that olive branch that she'll extend um, with diplomacy and being a great ambassador, but she's also got that sword in the other hand and willing to go to battle. And I've always thought, found that very fascinating, especially in contrast with some of the other characters. You know, Superman wasn't that guy, he was the goody two shoes. And so, there, anything could kind of happen in a different way with Wonder Woman um, than some of the other ones that I grew up with. And I love that. I loved her mythical, magical kind of origins and this Amazonian world of powerful women and her sexuality and like just so many, the weird origin story even of just the people who created her. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> wild. So it's, you know, it's it's just an interesting deep dive into our culture and into our world and, and um, I'm grateful to that she's still around to to impact people for the I think the greater good. But there's nuance, there's complexity, and that's what I like. I know Gary wanted to cast you one props when you're creating the voice. Do, no, do you hold a sword or I a don't. shield or fake I just sword. Wondered, and, you know, fake, fake sword. sword and maybe it's a all shield. like, but I'm like <laughs> running in place. And, like I'm really, I get into it for There's sure. There's nothing like watching Rosario in the back. <laughs> it's it's so much again. fun. Thank you very much. And, 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 and when she isn't, when she isn't, amazing. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks again.